All right, so in front of us we have the Acewell gauge. Now I chose this one mainly because it has kind of a finished back to it. So it's gonna look really attractive being that we plan to have it just fully exposed on the upper triple here in front of the bars. So I wanted to make sure I chose something that was aesthetically pleasing. That was very compact. Now because this gauge is silver, this is actually kind of the determining factor for me changing directions on the bike as far as color combination and stuff like that. So typically the, the easy decision to make is have everything just be some form of black. Always looks good, no risk taken, that kind of thing. Oh, you know, it, it, it's good, I do it a lot, everybody does it. But we're gonna change it up a little bit because this is silver. We're gonna do a lot of silver accents on the bike. So I think what that means is instead of doing, let's say, a lot of black on the engine, I'll try to do in more of an aluminum or silver finish. Maybe we'll do a kind of a silver ceramic coat on the pipes. Who knows, we're just gonna have fun with it and see how it turns out. But anyway, we have to get this gauge mounted. And the difficulty that I'll have here is actually how this thing is tied in already. Now, the uh, wiring harness, we already have our terminations on here, and this bracket fits very tightly around this cable. So what that means is to make any changes to this bracket, we're gonna have to go ahead and modify our wiring, which I'm not, I'm not afraid of, but um, if you guys are doing this, you have to understand that, that is pretty much going to void the warranty. So be prepared and just to, you know, be warned here. But I do want to go ahead and remake this bracket in a different shape to tie into the upper triple. So that's what we have to do. But anyway, that's custom. Now these gauges are always kind of universal fit. So they always try to include everything with a package like your actual speedometer, your magnetic pickup that goes down to the wheel, the plugs for your tachometer, as well as the lights and things like that. They always try to include those things for you to wire it into any bike that you have. And then they always include a diagram, or at least they should be including a diagram. For us, since we are going to modify this, a, uh, a kind of good practice item is to take photos of all of the wiring here. That way, you don't get it all screwed up and it all goes back in the same place. If you do repin it like factory. If there's a thousand photos on my phone, 900 of them are motorcycle things like this. Now for actual fitment on the bike, I do want it about right there. So easy to read, easy to access, and very clean looking. But unfortunately, this is going to make using the factory mounting system kind of impossible. I want to tie into the factory uh, ignition switch mounts for this thing. So we have to remake this bracket entirely. But we're gonna make it look good. It's gonna be made out of an aluminum piece. We'll give a nice bend to it. Make something cool. It'll look good. For now, I'm going to depin all these wires. So these all have like a little tang on the back. You can see right there. So what you do is you insert a small pick or screwdriver on top of the tang, you push down, and you pull out. It's very easy. And when you refit these, you can bend the tang back up, that way they lock back into place. But very simple, you don't have to cut anything. And then on the actual connectors, I went ahead and wrote what color goes to everything, along with taking photos. We're gonna be double, triple safe here, you know? And if you guys are ever looking for these terminals to actually replace, you can get them from uh, cycleterminal.com. They are a 110 style. Very common. You can get them from other places too, but that's just kind of the source I use right now. There you go. Well, these appear 
to be a 2.5 mil, so I gotta dig into my cell phone repair kit here. That's still not right. What size is that? No, oh, that's not right. Wrong one. 2.5, still not correct. What is this? It's a two. It's wobbly. Five sixty fourths wobbly. Three thirty seconds. Too big. This is strange. And the two fits, but I don't like it. There's not even a chance it would make it past that heat shrink. This is gonna be a challenge here. We're gonna have to at least lose the heat shrink. We should be able to get it off of this thing by pulling them out one at a time. carefully There we go. Now a cool thing I'm not noticing right here is that O-ring making this thing uh, really waterproof. So that's a nice little touch. That's why this thing is such a tight fit because it presses down on that O-ring and makes this thing seal up. Pretty cool. Alright, now holding the gauge up here, try to demonstrate this the best I can. You can see the kind of flat area on the back of the gauge where the mount would go. And then right here we have those two bosses I want to tie into. Now, if we basically set the gauge where that level, that that plane was level with that, that would be a pretty pretty simple bracket. Our wire bend gets pretty tight here, but I believe we could make that. Now, if we angle it a bit like that, where it's a little bit more upright that angle basically our bracket would uh, be level across and then it would bend down a little bit just to meet up with that section there so that wouldn't be too hard to do and i think it would look better and give us a little bit better placement a little bit better cable running but i think that might be the best fit is angling it forward just slightly i think that creates a happy medium with everything the gauge will be low but you have great visibility of it from from the bike
All right, here we have our basic bracket. I went ahead and obviously I traced the original gauge mount up top here because we're just going to mimic it. And then I've shown this in a previous video where I did the mono shock, just kind of how I do the, uh, the radiuses on brackets and stuff like that. So picked a generic washer that I will be using as our guide for our mounting tabs on the actual triple. So this is kind of the area I want to build into the bracket to have enough stability. So we kind of cut around that. We have our center marks there where I know we want to drill our holes. And then from there, I just went ahead and radiused it just to make everything kind of flow. So we're making it by hand. It's going to be, uh, you know, it won't be exactly perfect, but I kind of like that. So here we have our center mark, our three, well, four drill spots. And we'll have those two as a mounting bracket. This horizontal line, that is going to be our bend mark. And then... Beyond that, yeah, all we got to do is transfer this to aluminum and then cut it out. We'll go ahead and get it drilled and then we'll do our best to bend it and then we'll get it mounted on the bike. Okay, just dug this out of the uh, little scrap pile and this is actually three mil or eighth inch aluminum where this is four mil. Now, I'm actually not too concerned about the, uh, the difference here being that our original bracket was so thin right here in the middle and that had quite a bit of an overhang from where they intended you to mount it so that's putting a lot of stress right here and four mil could take that whereas we're basically eliminating all of that and adding strength on the sides so i think three mil will be totally strong it'll be plenty strong for this gauge we're mounting it really close so i think it's going to work good and the fact that this scrap piece is just about perfect couldn't ask for more net so let's go ahead and transfer our pattern drill our holes, and then we will get this cut out.
the bracket is test fit. It's fitting really well. All we need to do now is go ahead and bend down this center part. So I think what I'll do is I'll just clamp this thing in the vise and then we'll just try to bend the center section here instead of trying to get a hard bend all the way across. I think that'd be a little easier. All right, that looks pretty good. Kind of first try on all fronts. I did have to open up two of the mounting holes just a little bit. I, uh, I measured once if you guys counted and you know the rule, measure twice, drill once, you get it. Anyway, that looks really good up there. The fitment is tight in every area, which is ultimately what I wanted. It just looks, looks nice. So the wiring harness is going to be long enough to where it will just kind of run under the tank right here and be really clean and we didn't actually end up having to cut any wires so that's an added bonus we can just kind of plug everything back in i do obviously need to put a piece of heat shrink on that but we have to finish building the bike first and wire it so 
we got a long way to go. But right about here is where your head would be. So you have good body position, good view of the gauge. The buttons, you can't, they're, they're probably going to be blocked by the bar as far as line of sight, but easy access to them, just two buttons. How often are you hitting those anyway? So I like the way that's placed. Just one thing off the list. I, I only brought that gauge back this week to work on Wanda and just do one single thing because I'm so busy lately and uh, mission accomplished. So it was a couple hours, didn't take long and I like the results. Okay, well that's going to do it for this one. The uh, progress on Wanda continues just a little bit. The next project on this thing, I'm really kind of not sure at this point. Probably mounting the ignition switch, starting to mount the battery, get a couple more electronics on this thing. And then from there, it's just kind of bolting on some parts, stripping it back down, making it clean. I do want to go ahead and lower the forks internally, so I'll build a kind of spacer for the bottom there. And uh, generally just some basic stuff I and mean, we're making we're making good progress on here and basically when we're done it's just tearing it all down, cleaning it up and uh, you know wiring it up and so on and so forth. So anyway, hope you guys like this one. If you guys have any questions as usual, leave them below. I'll be sure to get right back to you. I will link anything I used in the description so I'll have that gauge down there. I've never used it, but you can at least see what it looks like and uh, I'll give you guys a source on where I bought it as everything. But if you guys haven't already, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Check out some of the videos on the channel. Head over to my website. I have my hats available, some t-shirts, hoodies, that kind of thing, and my stickers. If you guys want to go ahead and support the channel further. But anyway, anything is greatly appreciated, even just a comment below. So again, I hope you guys like this one. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.